Welcome everyone to Tumblr for Social Good. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'll be your host here at TechSoup's headquarters today in San Francisco. And we are going to get ourselves started with this webinar. I've been with the organization for about six years, and prior to that worked with small nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California over many years, uh, often being the accidental techie and making the decisions around which technologies we should move forward with and which ones we shouldn't. So I'm glad to be your host for today's event. Also joining us is Leba Rubenstein who is the Director of Social Impact and Policy at Tumblr. And she'll be sharing her expertise about how to engage your audience and connect with your constituents using tools like Tumblr. And she'll be giving us a bit of a demo as well as showing us some examples of how social good organizations, nonprofits, and libraries have been able to embrace this tool and leverage it for greater impact. You'll also see Ali Bazdikian on the back end. She's an interactive events and video producer here at TechSoup. And she'll be helping to make sure that your questions are flagged and helping you with any technical issues throughout the webinar. So a quick look at today's agenda. I'll do an introduction of TechSoup for those of you who aren't yet familiar with us. We'll do a couple of participant polls to gauge where you as our audience, where you're currently at in your use of Tumblr or not use of Tumblr. Um, and then Liba is going to take us through you know, really looking at what is Tumblr, why is it relevant to social good organizations. We'll look at some examples and some use cases, ways that it can be used. And she'll share some best practices and show us around Tumblr a little bit. We'll also have time for Q&A at the end. But again, feel free to put those questions that come up to you into that chat window anytime through the webinar so we can address them as opportunities arise throughout the presentation. So who is TechSoup? We are a 501 nonprofit, and we are working towards the day when every nonprofit, library, foundation, charity, church, what have you, social benefit organization around the world has the access to technology resources and knowledge to, make, uh, to better meet their mission. We've been around since 1987, serving more than 200,000 charitable organizations in more than 60 countries around the world. We have a catalog full of donation programs with companies like Microsoft offering products like Windows 8.1 and the latest QuickBooks 2014, and also offer new things like consulting services or online hosted services. So definitely check out these types of donation programs if you're not already familiar with us at TechSoup.org where you can learn more about the technology resources and products available to you and your fellow charitable organizations. Let's get us into Tumblr. So go ahead and click on these radio buttons on your screen to let us know if you're currently using Tumblr. Maybe you have a personal Tumblr. Maybe you uh, already have a professional or an org organization related Tumblr set up. Maybe you just look at Tumblr that other people have created. Uh, maybe it's brand new to you and you don't use it at all or you're not even sure what it is. So go ahead and let us know. Some of these you may feel multiple answers. So go ahead and chat into us if there is an option that is not on this screen that you'd like to share with us. And I'll give just a few more seconds to allow everybody to participate. And then we'll close this one and move on to one other poll question in just a moment. So take a second and click on your screens. Let us know what you're doing with Tumblr currently. I'm going to go ahead and let's see. So around almost half of our participants today, 45% say not at all. And another 20% say, I'm not even sure what it is. And that's totally okay. That's what this webinar is all about, is to make sure that one, you know what it is, and you know how to leverage it. Um, let's see, we've got about 20% that use it personally, and only about 7% that are using it professionally or for their organization. That's great to know. And for those of you who are using it professionally in your organization, if there are experiences that you have that you'd like to share with the audience, feel free to chat those in to us, and we can chat them back out so everybody can hear about your experiences as well. One other quick question, what do you think you can use Tumblr for? And so this is particularly useful I think for those folks who aren't quite sure what Tumblr is. Let us know if, uh, what you think you can use Tumblr for. Uh, and these are just a few of the options, but you can also chat into us. 
to let us know if you think if if you think Tumblr is for something totally different or something that's not on this list. Uh, is it? And this isn't even what you think it's primarily used for. You can select more than one of these options about what your impression is of Tumblr so far. And so Nancy writes in in the chat window that we use it for learner blogs for projectcommunity.info. So we'll chat that back out and people can look at it. Uh, Paula writes, I set Tumblr accounts for a Coursera class to showcase our work. That's cool. Um, Matthew writes, I thought of Tumblr as an earlier form of Snapchat. <laughs> so for those of you who are maybe not familiar with Snapchat, it's uh, an app that you can install on your mobile device that lets you chat quick photos to one another that disappear after 10 seconds or something like that. Let's see, Denise writes in, I originally started our Tumblr to collect articles and case studies before we started a project. So that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and click to show our results. And it looks like around 80% think that it's another social media site. Uh, and around 60% say that it's a good way to reach younger audiences. 56 percent, 57 percent, say mostly for blogging. So it's a great spread of, uh, of options of what people think it could be primarily used for. Um, let's see, we also have Urvashi writes, Tumblr hosts professional travelers who capture beautiful photographs. So a lot of different ways you can use it. And there is no wrong answer for this, which I think is somewhat the moral of the story with this uh, poll. And with that I'd like to invite Lieba Rubenstein, our presenter who is joining us from Tumblr today, to talk about how Tumblr is and can be used for all of these things, and how you can leverage this really flexible tool to use it uh, for your organization's mission. So welcome to, to the uh, webinar today. We are happy to have you join us, Lieba. Thanks so much, Becky. I hope you can all see the presentation. Um, I now can no longer see the chat window, so Becky will be monitoring your questions and comments from now on um, as I go through the presentation. Um, and Becky, just before you like jump in, Liba, sorry, yep. it, it looks good on my end, but I just want to let our audience know that since Liba yep. can't see your chat questions, let us know if the screen is loading slowly for you or anything like that, and we can interrupt if we need to to make sure that everybody can see what's going on. So with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you. Thanks, Liba. Totally, and, I, and no problem. Thanks, Becky. And again, on a technical note, there are it, this is the presentation is in Keynote, which is why I'm sharing my screen. And there are a lot of animations. So, it, depending on your internet connection or uh, or what device you're using, they may load a little bit slowly. So, just we we will we will try to move slowly enough that you can get the full experience and just be be patient. Um, but hopefully, it will add a little bit of extra fun to the presentation as well. Um, thanks everyone for having me and for taking the time. Um, uh, I'm really glad that we didn't overlap uh, too much with the, um, with the USA uh, soccer game, uh, although I did not watch it. I imagine there's some people on the phone here who wanted to make sure to get that in today. Um, and I'm really pleased to be talking to you guys. And really pleased, thank you so much for participating in the, um, in the poll because it Confirmed. I mean, there, there are many ways uh, that this conversation could go. Um, it really helps to, for me to prioritize what to focus on. I'm going to spend a lot more time on kind of Tumblr basics, what Tumblr is, and going through the wide variety of use cases, and maybe a little bit less time on the, the tactical best practices. Um, but certainly there will be enough time at the end for questions so that we can get into that um, if that's uh, if that's useful for folks, because um, I'm going to I'm going to speak primarily to those who are new to the platform. Um, I will say, and and this gets a little bit at what I'm going to talk about later, that um, Tumblr is a little bit like the old um, parable about the blind men and the elephants. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I think it's an Indian parable um, in which you know there's ten blind men standing around this enormous creature, and each of them sticks out their hands. Uh, to touch the creature and describe what they're feeling and, and believe that the entire beast is uh, represented by that one piece that they're touching. So 
Um, one of them feels the tail and one feels the trunk and one feels the, a toe um, and one feels the sort of leathery body and one feels an ear and you can imagine that their perception of what the entire animal is is completely different depending on um, which piece they experience. And Tumblr is so versatile um, that even folks who are familiar with Tumblr, especially if you use it personally, a lot of the use cases that we're going to talk through in terms of organizations and institutions may be completely new to you, may be a way of thinking about Tumblr that you've never encountered before. So hopefully, um, you know, if you're sitting here saying, oh, well, I, well, I was looking for more tactical stuff, um, uh, but you're going to do sort of a Tumblr one-on-one, -on -one, hopefully this will still be very valuable um, and we can certainly address specific requests as we go. Um, my name is Liba um, and, uh, and I work at Tumblr. Um, and my role at Tumblr is, uh, as Becky said, Director of Social Impact and Policy, which is pretty much as broad and big as it sounds. Um, and uh, I do everything from uh, sort of external facing work to build the narrative of Tumblr as a platform for social good, uh, to evangelize the tools of Tumblr to the, the social impact community. I do a lot of talks like this, but also broader ones about young people and civic engagement online, or the GIF as the new um, political cartoon, or um, changing nature of, of uh, politics and media, a whole range of things that sort of represent Tumblr's role in the zeitgeist um, when it comes to social and civic engagement. And I also help to set uh, uh, to, to think, help our CEO think about what are the values that Tumblr as a company espouses and how those values um, live and breathe through our, uh, our employer policies, our user policies, and our engagement with public policy as well as the issues that we might get behind philanthropically or from, on a cause basis. So um, the, I wear many hats. Um, we're going to focus on, on one of them now. Um, so what is Tumblr? Um, we describe Tumblr as a social blogging platform, which sounds a little bit like new media mumbo jumbo, but it's actually very descriptive of what the product does. Um, which is specifically, it is a little bit uh, schizophrenic. It has a multiple personalities, this product. Unlike most social networks that you might be familiar with, um, Tumblr is also a publishing platform. That's why we call it social blogging. So Tumblr has a web-facing experience and a logged-in experience that are very, very different, and tools that serve each of those experiences. Um, so we like to say we are where the open web and social media meet, which means that creating a Tumblr means that you can have the discoverability of a blog to the open web and the ability to control the way your content appears to the open web, as well as the audience and reach and engagement opportunities of a social network. <clears throat> this is probably might be loading slowly for some of you. Um, unlike some social networks out there, we are not into creative constraints. So uh, you can post any type of media in pretty much any form and any size, you know, to a point. Um, we actually have seven post types that are that are very much uh, customized to that type of media. So our product team spends a lot of time making sure that when you post video to Tumblr, you have the best possible video experience. When you post audio to Tumblr, you have the best possible audio experience, et cetera, et cetera. The customizability of text um, images are obviously very important as they are increasingly across social media. So we, we really spend a lot of time in our very simple and streamlined product making sure that each type of media that you might post is going to be optimized for that experience. <clears throat> um, you know, we're not limiting you to square photos, and we're not limiting you to 140 characters. The, every piece of content on Tumblr um, exists in multiple forms. And uh, apologies for the, the, the sales slide, but it's really pretty, and also I figure everybody loves some sizzling bacon, um, even if you're a vegetarian. It just, it's just fun to look at and you can, you can almost smell it through the screen when it's animated like that. Um, but the point of this slide is to show that the same post exists both on the open web, that's the first image, also in the dashboard, in your browser, 
that's the second image. That's what the logged in experience looks like on Tumblr. And as well, it's fully optimized for mobile, um, both in the browser and in the app. We also play well with other social media. So because Tumblr has this sort of unique element of the web-facing experience, um, a lot of folks use Tumblr as the home for their content and then syndicate from there to other social networks that will then drive traffic back to their Tumblr. Or they use other social networks that are primarily designed for uh, creating a particular type of content and pull in the content from there um, to the Tumblr. So for example, um, there's a good argument to be made that one of the reasons Instagram enjoyed such, um, such success in its early days when it when, – when, I don't know if you all remember when Instagram first launched oh so long ago. What was it, like 18 months ago or something? Um, the only way that you could view um, photos on Instagram was if you were an Instagram user and if you had the app. So a lot of people who were excited about Instagram pulled their Instagram photos into a Tumblr and then were able to share those photos with all of their friends even those who weren't on Instagram. The same sort of growth happened with YouTube and MySpace in the early days. So these sort of more versatile platforms become uh, a way to share content that exists and is created on more, um, more constrained platforms. And so Tumblr be can become very much sort of a hub of of your whole social media ecosystem. Again, this just reemphasizes um, the multiple benefits, uh, the sort of web benefits as combined with social media benefits. <clears throat> and we'll show you how what some of these things look like. Um, so we've talked a lot about sort of the web-facing experience, the ability to customize the way your content appears as a publishing platform, and now we're going to talk a little bit about that logged in social experience. So again, this is the dashboard. This is what it looks like when you're logged into Tumblr. And what is that community that we're talking about when we say we're a social network as well as a publishing platform? Um, we have about 200 million blogs around the world. Um, 125,000 new folks are signing up every day. Um, 90 million posts are made every day. Um, and we have, depending on the numbers that you're using, somewhere between 150 and 300 million um, monthly uniques globally. We are also, and this is I think particularly important um, perhaps for some folks on the phone today, um, uniquely balanced when it comes to gender and, and demographics. Um, a lot of other social networks skew heavily in one direction or the other. And we heavily over-indexed in, um, in millennials. Um, and I think that that's, that's why a lot of organizations initially come to Tumblr because they hear about it as a place where young people are. Um, you know, these stats are important um, for a couple of reasons. One, there's a lot of um, press about Tumblr being where teens are. Um, you can see the numbers don't really bear that out. Teens are by no means the majority of our users. They are super engaged, and there are trends that show that they're using other social networks uh, perhaps less, not necessarily leaving them, but slightly less engaged on those platforms. And they're coming to platforms like Tumblr to really express themselves and, um, and interact more regularly. And anecdotally, I would say my experience is that um, teens are sort of uh, uh, overly engaged on Tumblr. Just to give you a sense of what that means, uh, we have a post limit, um, a, a daily post limit for Tumblr, which is really designed to prevent spam. Um, we don't publicize exactly what that number is, but it's somewhere between two and 300 posts a day. Um, when I look at like Tumblr mentions on Twitter or the support tickets coming in to our support team, um, we get dozens if not hundreds of complaints every day from teenagers who are hitting their post limit. And they love Tumblr, but the one thing that they're most frustrated by is that they can't post more than 200 times in one day. So that just gives you some sense of, of what, of the type of engagement we're getting among teens. But I think importantly for this group, um, because millennials are you know, such an important demographic, they're about to be 50% of our workforce, they're increasingly donating to nonprofits, uh, they're sort of the, the, 
you know, the fastest growing donor base that you really want to understand how to engage. They're the young, the new and young voters. Um, they're the, you know, sort of upwardly mobile, mobile young folks who are entering their first jobs, who are figuring out how to spend their money. Um, so it's a really important demographic, and, um, and Tumblr is very much where they live. And even more important than these big numbers, uh, these sort of overall traffic numbers, are the engagement metrics. Um, and um, you know, really this slide is just to show that Tumblr sort of schmices everyone else uh, on engagement. We've been consistently number one uh, of Comscore's top 100 web properties. And the reason that this is important is if you think about, so, so we're usually neck and neck with Facebook on engagement. And um, and Facebook is in many ways the holy grail of engagement, as I'm sure many of you have experienced. And the thing that I would say to kind of put Tumblr in context is that if you think about what engagement on Facebook means, think about all of the different types of activities that people do when they're logged into Facebook. They're not just um, you know, looking at and sharing content, but they're also playing games, and they're organizing events, and they're chatting with their friends. And so if Tumblr and Facebook have sort of similar levels of engagement, 100% of that engagement on Tumblr is around the creation, curation, and consumption of content, which means that if you think of yourselves to some extent um, on the web as content creators um, and publishers, um, in theory, 100% of all of these beautiful engagement metrics could be around your content on Tumblr. Um, and even more importantly to that online engagement is the offline engagement. Because there's a lot of cynicism out there, especially among young people, among millennials, that, okay, it's great. These kids will they'll click and they'll share and they'll like things. But are they actually going to convert into the other behaviors that are very meaningful for our organization? Um, we don't collect a whole lot of information about our users, and I can't wait for the day that we actually do our own research on this. But these are numbers from Comscore um, that if you have access to Comscore, you can also look up you know, and compare social networks. But compared to um, other, the average user of the Internet um, between 18 and 34, um, our users are more likely to, to go to a rally, more likely to be the ones to advise their communities on current events, more likely to be registered to vote. They're also more likely to have donated to an organization in the last six months. So there are, you know, there are um, some objective measures that show that this audience that is super engaged and influential online, is that, that engagement translates offline as well. And engagement on Tumblr comes in a few forms. Some of these will be familiar to you if you're a user of social media. Um, there is the follow, the like, and the reblog. Um, following is really about building a community of folks that you can go back to time and again, people who have opted in to receive your content on a regular basis. Uh, likes are uh, you know, that sort of immediate satisfying feedback of just um, signaling that, that folks have engaged with your content. And the reblog is really the, um, the magic of engagement on Tumblr. Um, the reblog was designed actually before the retweet existed, but for similar reasons as a response to traditional online commenting, um, where especially before Facebook Connect, online commenting, and it still is to some extent today, you know, a, an easy excuse for people to dump, negative, dump negativity on other people's content and walk away. Um, and the idea with the reblog is that if you want to engage in a conversation around content that's not yours, um, you should have to really own that that conversation and be prepared to have all of your followers know what you're contributing to that conversation. So it's a way to hold people accountable and to create a, a more, hopefully a more positive, um, more positive environment. Um, and it really does that. We're actually there is, if you can believe it, Adobe Social Intelligence Report ranks Tumblr as the highest, has the highest sentiment ranking among social media websites. There's actually a study that shows that that, in, that the comments and the engagement and the types of content people post on Tumblr actually is objectively more positive um, than on other platforms. So you know, I would like to believe that the reblog has, has fulfilled that, that intention. But it's also because it's the way that folks 
take your content and own it and publish it to their followers is a really magical way for your content to travel through a network. Um, this is sort of a visualization of the nodes of, uh, of engagement around a reblog. And you can see that um, you can actually identify influencers in your network by understanding how the reblog um, travels and see who are the folks who are sharing your content, um, who, actually, who are the most influential and who are amplifying your content the most. They might not even be followers. They might be, um, they might be folks who encountered your content farther down the line. Um, our third-party analytics partner, Union Metrics, and we can talk about analytics more later if people are interested, does this sort of visualization around, uh, around all of your posts so you can actually um, really understand uh, how, how your community is engaging and who that community is. Um, and this, the reblog is also part of why uh, the nature of content and content sharing and engagement on Tumblr is pretty different from on other social networks. A third of all reblogs occur 30 days after the content was originally posted. So content on Tumblr is not nearly as ephemeral as it is on other social networks. Um, I can also show you later we have an archive function. So you may have experienced that feeling on Facebook where you were scrolling through um, through your news feed and you remember that you saw this great article that someone posted, um, but there's, just, there's basically no way to find it if you, if you don't have it right in front of you. Um, on Tumblr, you can actually search through that content. You can find archival content. A lot of organizations um, and entities that I work with use Tumblr for evergreen and archival content because it doesn't have to be quite as immediate and newsworthy as it does on other platforms. I know that the rule on Twitter is something like if you don't get engagement in 20 minutes, like the tweet is dead and you have to tweet the same link again um, in order to, to get it in front of people again. And similarly, um, in terms of reach, 60% of all reblogs come from downstream, which means followers of followers. So again, um, it's a, the reblog is a beautiful way of getting your content in front of people who haven't already opted in and reaching new audiences. So, I'm just going to stop there for a couple of seconds because I've thrown a lot at you about the Tumblr product. Some of this stuff that just sounds like words will become a lot clearer when I show you the use cases, but I just wanted to stop and see if anyone had um, demographic or engagement questions that we could address before we move on to kind of specific examples. Sure. Well, this is probably a segue more than a, a question Great. about the, the numbers. But you know, we've had a couple of people ask about specific scenarios in Tumblr. So okay. Urvashi asked, you know, how can we use it in a library? And Matthew yep. asks a similar question saying, you know, how, um, you know, I'm thinking maybe I could host audio and video or video of my sermons that I preach at Sunday mm -hmm. worship so that shut-ins yeah. or military service yeah. members who aren't able to come out could actually access these things. Um, yeah. So those are a couple of examples of the types of uses that a couple of participants have mentioned. Um, do you want to speak to the different ways that it can be used and segue into some of your examples? Sure. I think I will actually go ahead with the examples, and then I'll refer to those specific those specific questions in the context of these examples that I'm going to show. If that's all right. Sounds great. Sure. Um, okay. So, so I'm going to talk about these are these are broad types of uses um, that I see specifically among um, social good organizations um, and sort of civic engagement organizations um, that just give you a sense of the breadth of how Tumblr can be useful to what you want to do on the web. So the most, honestly, the, the most common usage and, and one of the most exciting overall is just a lot of the organizations that I work with either have websites that are built in old technology and that are a real pain to update, or if you're lucky, you have a really gorgeous website that was built by a fancy agency that donated their time. And so it's really beautiful and highly functional and interactive. But still, if you want to make a change or you want to update the content, you're sort of last on your designer's priority list because you're the pro bono client. And so for a whole lot of reasons, a lot of organizations that I work with think of Tumblr as the way to do what they can't do on their website. Sometimes it's also because their website has a slightly different audience. Their website is where their donors go. And their big donors are of a different generation, and they're looking for different things, and the kind of information they want is different. 
But these organizations know, for example, that 75% of millennials um, who, who are donors say that they are completely turned off by a nonprofit website that is static. So young people are looking for a living, breathing website, which is sometimes really hard to do um, on your main site. And so Tumblr can actually exist as, again, because it has this web-facing experience, can exist as an extension of your site. Um, either um, a lot of organizations are hosting their official blogs on Tumblr. Because you can assign your own URL to your Tumblr, the user experience to your web visitor who comes to the Tumblr through your home page or comes through Tumblr through um, web search might not even know that they're on a Tumblr if you don't want them to, um, if they don't know what they're looking for. Um, at, because you can skin it to look exactly like your site. You can be completely on brand. You can really use it as an extension of your existing website, just one that's a lot easier to manage, and you're essentially using Tumblr as a content management system. And then secretly, every single post that's appearing on that site is also shareable within the network, this super engaged network of 200 million other blogs. Um, there are a zillion examples of this, and I can show you some others as we go through. Um, a, you know, taking it a step further, I've worked with organizations who use Tumblr as the home page, uh, as the main site, either of their whole organization or the microsite for a particular campaign. This one I might pull up on the, on the browser later because it's really beautiful and you don't even get a sense of, of how gorgeous it is um, with this static image. But Sailmade um, has done work in the largest refugee camp in the world for many years. Um, and they were uh, empowering the refugees with their own kind of media tools and training so that they could tell their own stories. And this content had never seen the light of day. It was, it was being used as sort of a coping mechanism for the refugees themselves. And eventually, Stillmade said, we need, to, we need to show this content to the world. And so they built this beautiful site, jobstories.org, um, that is a site built on Tumblr. It does not look like a blog. It doesn't look like anything you probably have ever imagined a Tumblr would look like. But it is, in fact, a Tumblr. And each piece of content exists um, as a post in the dashboard that's shareable. Um, Tumblr is also used as a way to actually serve the community, to provide a service that's in line with your mission. Um, Planned Parenthood, uh, their first Tumblr was using our Ask function to, uh, to showcase its sort of health, um, uh, uh, reproductive and sexual health information uh, services. Um, when, so they were actually collecting questions through Tumblr and then answering those questions. Um, when they first launched in the first month or so, Tumblr was the number one referral to their online hotline chat service as well. So it was a way to, um, to, to reach a community with a particular part of your brand and part of your service and actually drive people to be more engaged and use your other services as well. Um, and then there's just sort of the, um, I've seen Tumblr used as rapid response in politics and Tumblr used as a way to display a lot of user-generated content. This is one of my favorite, like really simple examples uh, of sort of a micro campaign that I think launched around the, um, the, the, government shut, the last government shutdown um, where someone just started a Tumblr that's called Is Congress In Today? And every day he would update it um, and design the Tumblr so that you're only seeing one post at a time. And so you just go on that day and you get the answer to your question. It's kind of a brilliant, simple use of the platform. Another common use of Tumblr is uh, it's almost taking a signal from the sort of pop culture um, meme type uses of Tumblr, which is to uh, pick one theme and kind of stick with that one theme and build a brand around a particular theme. So in this case, the World Bank, not your sexiest brand in the world. Um, yes, maybe an organization that's create, technically creating a lot of original content, but it's not really like social media ready content. They, decide, they were interested in reaching um, a sector of the Tumblr audience that is sort of the intersection of design and tech and data nerds. Um, they have 800 data sets available on their website that nobody knows about, no one's doing anything with. So they, they decided to build a Tumblr that was almost 100% curated content, so it was not original content. They were just collecting content from elsewhere on the web and reblogging content from within Tumblr. 
but it was all of the best data visualizations about um, uh, about international development. Now it's super specific and kind of wonky, but if you know what audience you're trying to reach, you can use Tumblr as a way to build your authority um, and build um, clout and credibility among that audience to say, if you want to know everything there is to know about X, you come here. And we have tools like a bookmarklet that you put in your browser that allows you to post to your Tumblr from anywhere on the web so you encounter great relevant content and you don't have to copy and paste it. It will automatically format to whatever post type you want that you can post to the Tumblr without even clicking back to Tumblr. You can use all the content that's already coursing through the system, uh, the, the Tumblr network, um, and leverage all of that content and just curate content that's already within Tumblr to one location that has one particular theme that helps to build an audience of people who are interested in that particular theme. You can also leverage tools uh, that we have that other sites don't have, like the Q&A function and the submission function, to drive direct engagement with your audience. Um, the Planned Parenthood example is a good example of that. NPR does a zillion of these. They're, they have, they're launching like one submission Tumblr a month that ties in with some sort of on-air programming. But what's nice about this is that um, it's they're really using Tumblr for one particular set of tools. Um, they're referring to those tools. They're linking to those tools from their, their main site. And, um, and it means that they don't have to build their own user-generated content submission function. Um, they're just using Tumblr's own function. And again, they can skim the page to look however they want, and that content can be shareable within the network. But they're really using Tumblr tools to power what they already want to do on the web that's accessible to everybody. Um, so just I, I'm, I'm moving into some of the best practices, but, um, but just to address some, those two questions that came up. So in terms of libraries, and I'll, when I get out of the presentation, I'll pull up some library examples. But I would say for libraries as a category could use any one of these use cases that I was talking about. I guess the last use case being um, Tumblr as just another branch of your social media strategy where you're posting a version of the same content that you're posting elsewhere, but you're customizing it to the Tumblr audience to really drive engagement within the Tumblr network. And that's where some of these uh, best practices really come in. A lot of those other examples were much more about using Tumblr to power your digital strategy more broadly, not specifically about the tum engaging the Tumblr audience. Um, but um, so I think that libraries can can use Tumblr in pretty much any of those categories. I've seen libraries that are, you know, posting a book a day, or using Tumblr as a book club, or using Tumblr um, as a way to humanize the institution and having multiple librarians at the same library curate content, um, and you get to know the librarians. They're posting in their own voices. Um, you uh, you could use Tumblr as a way to uh, to show like amazing archival content that the library holds. Um, obviously, libraries like the Library of Congress does this, um, and the National Archives does this very, very successfully, as well as smaller institutions. Um, so I think pretty much any of those use cases could work for a library. Um, for, for a church or a religious institution, or really I would put a preacher in the category of any other creator like a photographer or journalist or um, anyone else who is creating content on a regular basis and wants it to find the greatest audience possible, and perhaps there are in-person ways to experience that content in a gallery, whether it's a gallery or a church or a movie theater, um, but they also want it to be accessible to other folks. That is, that is one of the original use cases for Tumblr. Tumblr was, is where a lot of um, journalists, photojournalists, photographers, um, artists, um, uh, storytellers, uh, short story writers, novelists, um, you, Tumblr is their home page on the web. Tumblr is their main blog, um, is their main site, um, because it has that archival capability and because it's such an easy content management system. So I think for sure um, posting content, a variety of types of content, you can even post, I mean what's beautiful about the multifaceted nature of Tumblr is you can imagine one sermon Ha living in many different forms on Tumblr without being redundant. So you could post the whole thing as a video. You could post the whole thing as an audio file. 
and you could pull out individual quotes and post those separately and uh, and organize quotes by topic um, and have a whole experience on the Tumblr where people are uh, are able to read quotes and passages from your sermons on different topics and they can search based on the topic that they're interested in. So all, you can have you know one original piece of content that lives in multiple forms um, and is accessible to people in whatever form they're 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 interested in finding it, and one can link to the other. So people come to the sermon through a quote, um, but there's a link at the bottom of that to the post that's the video post. Um, it, it's kind of a beautiful way of of getting at all the facets of one piece of content. Um, so I'm going to really quickly run through some of these best practices um, in the next like two minutes, and then open it up to questions again, and we can look at stuff in the browser. Um, uh, and get to some more specific uh, specific questions and cases. Um, so a lot of these dashboard um, tips are, you know, some of them are very similar to what you're going to hear from any other social network. Um, visual content is uh, is only increasing in relevance on the internet. Um, so simplicity, visual, colorful, positive. Now I will say these are really really broad generalizations. And Tumblr, like the rest of the internet, is really one huge community made up of many niches. And there are there are really active um, uh, librarian communities, long form journalism communities, you know, fandoms of every type. So um, content that might not conform to these broad generalizations might really work if you if you're plugging into the right audience. Um, Tumblr is definitely prioritizes quality over quantity, um, so I wouldn't be too worried about like the uh, the amount of content that you post as long as it's in sort of a regular cadence and you're building the right expectation among your followers. And again, there's so much content already through the system, and so many easy ways to post from elsewhere on the web that you can supplement your own original content if there's not that much of it with other people's content that are relevant to yours that you can add commentary to and be part of a larger conversation. Um, and, uh, and again, you, it doesn't have to be quite as timely. Um, but having a little bit of humor and a little bit of irreverence will definitely go a long way on Tumblr. It is not necessary, but it, but it can really help. Um, and being a good Tumblr citizen is really about engaging in the platform, even if you're primarily using Tumblr for its web tools and you're using it to reach everyone on the web, not just folks within the network. You know, still follow other blogs that are relevant, like other posts that are relevant. It will it will build goodwill. It will spread your links within the network. It will help drive engagement within Tumblr. And again, those posts are still influential offline as well. So you don't want to totally neglect them. Um, most the the most engagement happens actually outside the workday on Tumblr. Um, you can queue and schedule posts to hit these prime uh, times, and also to you can sit down on a Monday morning and queue up ten posts to post at regular intervals across the rest of the week. Um, but I wouldn't worry too much about these uh, these rules just because again the life cycle of a post is so long. That even if you're not posting during the the high engagement hours, you still might get a lot of engagement. You know, hours, days, weeks later. Tagging is really important. We can talk about that a little bit more if you're interested. But tags are both a form of discoverability within the Tumblr search function and the Tumblr network, as well as a way to organize content within your own uh, your own site. And I can't say enough about the animated GIF. We can talk a little bit more about this if folks are interested. It's really had a renaissance in recent years. Um, I would say, you know, thanks to Tumblr in many ways. Um, now you see other platforms supporting GIFs that didn't before. Um, but they've really become uh, elevated to an art form and a communications medium, not just sort of annoying blinking graphics on, on a MySpace page. Um, and they can be really powerful as a way to record a live event, um, uh, leverage gifts from pop culture to express an idea that's relevant to your important, uh, important issue. Um, it's really arresting in a, in a scrolling dashboard environment 
when you're scanning a whole lot of content. Um, you can see a lot of other platforms took cues from the animated GIF when they made videos autoplay. So like Instagram video um, autoplays when you, when you sit on it in your, in your Instagram feed. Like that's very much modeled on how the animated GIF works. It's something that doesn't require you to press play to engage with it. Um, and so it has a much lower barrier to entry. It's really a fascinating format. And it is relevant for serious issues. It's really not just for memes and pop culture. And there are a ton of tools out there, both mobile and web tools, at various levels of expertise and sort of technical ability that it will allow you to take advantage of the gift. And then obviously, you know, post it to your Tumblr um, and tag it appropriately and share away. Okay, that's the end of my formal presentation. We still have a few a good 10 minutes left for questions. Sorry, that was a little, uh, a little longer than I'd hoped. But um, now we can dig into to some more specifics. No problem, Liba. Thank you so much for that. Really interesting, and I love some of the examples that you gave. Um, we had a couple of sort of the logistical side of Tumblr questions. Um, mm -hmm. So one is, uh, Matthew asks, does Tumblr expect money to boost our pages or posts similar to what Facebook has been doing? Is there any cost to Tumblr? Like money sure. cost? Um, there is not only is there no money cost to Tumblr, but our ad product is actually such a premium ad product right now that even if you have money at the end of the year and you're like, oh, maybe I'll throw a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars to Tumblr and play with Tumblr advertising and see if that works, we can't even take your money. Um, so there isn't a self-serve ad product right now. Um, I think it will be great when that does exist, but you can actually, if you are in the in the habit of buying ads, you can actually buy Facebook ads that drive your Tumblr, um, just like you could buy, uh, you know, uh, Google ads that drive to your Tumblr if that's something that you're interested in. I actually, and we'll see how long this lasts, but our advertising on Tumblr is native advertising, which means that um, all that the the unit of promotion is the post and the blog. Um, so all of the folks who are spending a lot of money with us are actually active within the Tumblr community. They're, they, they have Tumblr, they are posting regularly to Tumblr, and they are paying a bunch of money to us to help promote those posts. I have the ability to leverage all of those same units that we sell to advertisers on an editorial basis to help promote great things that, um, that nonprofits are doing as well. So. Um, it's not super targeted, so you know, and, and it is on an editorial basis. But I would definitely take advantage of. Um, there's a function on here. I'm showing you. This is my blog for nonprofits. Um, you can submit to the ChangeMaker, um, the ChangeMaker site, and let me know about a new campaign that you've launched. Um, or that, that you're newly on Tumblr, and I can work with our editorial team and see if we can't feature you in some way or another. Um, so definitely send me things that you're proud of, that you'd love a little extra boost on. I can't promise anything, but I, that there are cases in which we're able to give it a little extra love um, in addition to all that great organic uh, work that you're going to do within the community. So no, Tumblr is free. The only other thing that I will say is that our third-party analytics partner, Union Metrics, which is a really great product. There's a free version of the product, but the paid version has definitely has some extra features in it that, um, that if you have some budget and if you're really investing in Tumblr as a platform, are, are very much worth your, worth your investment. And the last thing that I'll say about money is that um, we have something called the theme garden. Um, so just like WordPress, um, uh, there are off-the-shelf designs for your Tumblr that are a great place to start, if you want, especially if you want to use Tumblr as a home for a particular campaign or your main blog or your main site on the web. And as you can see, there's a lot of them that are free, um, but some of them do cost money. Those are one-time costs, and the most expensive ones are $49. So even if you're really going all out and getting something super fancy and getting all the support that's built in with it, you're only spending 50 bucks one. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the extent of cost on Tumblr. 
Great. And so with, with the question about analytics, we had one that just came in that's related to that asking, you know, can you tie this into your existing analytics tool if you use something else like Google Analytics? Can you connect your Tumblr with that, or do you have to use the one that's already connected to Tumblr? Sure. So for the web side of Tumblr, the web publishing side of Tumblr, Google Analytics is a great option. We encourage a lot of the themes have uh, have built in the theme customization, a really easy place to drop in your Google Analytics account. So yes, you can absolutely connect those, um, and we highly recommend it. That's not going to capture any of the data in the dashboard. So it's not going to capture engagement metrics around posts among logged in users. That's where um, Union Metrics comes in, and that's pretty much the only consumer facing product out there that does Tumblr Dash. Um, now, uh, there is a product, and I'm showing you guys right now. Um, there is in your dashboard, and I have, this is something that's only available to advertisers, but the activity tab, um, it, it comes with every, every account, and you can see up to the last 30 days of key engagement metrics on Tumblr. And Union Metrics is basically just a much, much more robust and long-term view of a lot of the same. Uh, same analytics. So you do have separate analytics for the uh, the social media side of Tumblr versus the web publishing side of Tumblr. Great. Um, we have a question from Kimberly asking, how do you secure your own URL for a Tumblr page? Like, is it just when you set it up that you just get it, or do you have to purchase it from somewhere or buy the domain? How does that work? Yep. So when you start a new blog or when you start a new Tumblr account, you're going to be asked a couple of things, including the title and the URL. Um, it will tell you once you choose the URL whether or not it's available immediately. So you might have to go through a few different versions. You can also search, just you know, type into the web browser the URL that you want.tumblr.com, and you'll see pretty quickly whether it's available. Now that's for the Tumblr URL, and that's going to be sort of your username within the dashboard. But when it comes to assigning um, assigning another uh, uh, URL that you own, maybe it's a subdomain of your main site, it's your site.org, your organization.org slash blog or something, you want it to be your Tumblr, there's also a place um, in your settings um, where you can you literally just type in that URL that you already own on the web. And within about 24 hours, they'll sync up, um, and you can map that domain to your Tumblr. Um, so, for example, um, a lot of the organizations and companies that use Tumblr as their main blog, including the U.S. federal government, use their own own URLs. Um, I'm just showing you a few examples. And that, that's just in, in your setting. So you have to own, okay. own that URL separately, and then you assign it to your Tumblr. Mm. Great. Um, so as far as the engagement is concerned, does Tumblr have a chat portal, or are people able to engage? Um, like Kara asks, is, uh, interaction, is there any kind of live voice interaction, like what you'd see in virtual worlds like Second Life? Or is it primarily you know, liking, following, reblogging, that kind of stuff. Uh, it is it is the latter. It's it's very simple functionality around content. Um, and now there are there are third party products that plug into Tumblr that offer chat functions and other things that aren't necessarily endorsed by us or supported by us, but there's a zillion of those um, of those add-ons that, um, that are available. Um, and there's also a very robust community of Tumblr folks who meet up in real life. Um, so we have a, a very um, uh, a robust meetup network. Um, we actually have our own meetup uh, engine on Tumblr. And you can see there's like um, you know, dozens of them every week around the world. So there is very much like a culture of real life and real time uh, uh, communing with other folks in your community um, that, we, that we do help to facilitate, but there aren't online tools to facilitate 
real time chat or or voice contact other than the the basic kind of content publishing and sharing tools. Great. So, uh, you know, kind of with that in mind, there are a handful of questions that are asking about, you know, posting to Tumblr from anywhere on the web and how that works. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, somebody asks, you know, can I publish on our blog and have that shared on Tumblr? Can I publish on Second Life and have that shared in Tumblr? Um, how does it work? Is it only those specific uh, web apps that you showed the logos of that you can share from, or is it really from anywhere? Well, so there's there's two ways to answer that question. The automated function that's really that is a site by that's a a, a product by product question, and I I actually don't know um, off the top of my head whether there's definitely a function where you can link your if you have a WordPress blog you can publish directly to Tumblr. Every post can publish a Tumblr. You know, I would question exactly if you're sort of mirroring content one for one, like what the value really is there, and what you, you know, what additional value you think you're going to get out of it. But that's certainly possible. Um, I don't know offhand from Second Life, for example, but that's that's something that Second Life builds um, through our API, not something that we build. Um, but the other question of like how you post from other places on the web to Tumblr on a sort of a case by case basis, not an automatic basis. Um, I just happen to have this up in my browser, but I can show you the way that the bookmarklet works, which is that this is a this is a, something that I've dragged a, a tool that I've dragged to my um, bookmarks bar, and you can see it's loading slowly. But I want to share this article on Tumblr, and I can basically share it in any of the the post types. So um, I can do a photo post and choose any of the images that's on the page as the main uh, as the main image for the photo post. I can do it as a quote post and pull out you know some text from the from the article and post that as a quote, and it will automatically retain all the source material. I can post it as a link post, et cetera, et cetera. If there was video on the page, I could do it as a video post. Um, so um, that's how, and, and then literally, like as long as you're logged into Tumblr, um, you, you make the post here um, where you find the content, and it will post to your blog. Um, you, can, you can even save it as a draft. Or add it to your queue, or schedule it. Great. You can add tags. You can customize your tweet. All of that send send automatically to your other social networks, et cetera, et cetera. All bookmarks. Lots of things. Great. Well, we are at the top of the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and steal the screen back from you quickly okay. um, because I wanted to show a couple of wrap-up things way down here at the end. Um, thank you so much for that and taking time to answer all of these questions. For anyone who has additional questions, I would invite you to join us in the Digital Engagement Community Forum on TechSoup's site, and we'll share that link in the follow-up email as well. Um, really quickly before we close out, I know that we're a minute after the hour already. I just wanted to quickly show um, – where did it go here? So TechSoup has a Tumblr, Nonprofit Tech Confessions, where you can share your uh, greatest shames around technology and how it's used in your office. And then for the librarians who are on the line who are interested, there is a Tumblarian's uh, Tumble that is, or Tumblr that is a list of excellent Tumblr sites for libraries and from libraries all around the country. And it's pretty exhaustive. It's amazing. So if you're a librarian, definitely check out the, uh, the Lifeguard Librarian Tumblr at Tumblarians, and I'll share that link after. Um, and then there's, you know, Leva had already shared the Tumblr of um, different spotlighted uh, nonprofits that you can submit yourself to be part of. And you know, just as one other library example, one of my favorites is this Left in a Library book Tumblr, where they mm -hmm. feature photographs of pieces of stuff that are left inside library books. And I just think it's a lot of fun. So wanted to share that quickly. Lastly, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and invite you to join us for any upcoming webinars. Uh, we, like I said, we archive these. So even if you're not able to join us, if you register for them, 
you'll get an email after with all of the information and the recording. So we have one coming up for faith-based organizations next Tuesday, followed by two different mobile technology webinars, one specifically for libraries and how to welcome people in your community to use mobile devices in your library. And then on the 17th of July, how to write earth-changing emails to help you raise funds. So with that, I'd like to thank you so much, Leba, for your excellent presentation today. Sorry to be rushing you off the line uh, here a couple minutes over the hour. And thank you so much for everyone for participating. Please take a moment uh, when the webinar closes to take a chance and let us know how we did today so we can continue to improve our webinar program. Thank you so much to ReadyTalk who provides the use of this platform for our webinars each week. Uh, it is also available to nonprofits, and, and you can demo their product. Uh, four times a week through ReadyTalk. So thank you so much everyone, and have a terrific day.